You're listening to The Voluntary Life, where you can hear ideas for finding freedom in an unfree world. Visit thevoluntarylife.com to connect with the show and hear all past episodes. Here's your host, Jake. Hi, it's Jake here. Welcome to The Voluntary Life. This is the last podcast of 2012, and it's New Year's Eve, and I've been thinking about the new year. So I thought I'd do a podcast with some good tidings for 2013. And I thought I'd talk about something that I call doom porn. If you look at the media around you, I think uh, you'll find that we are surrounded by doom porn. And what I mean by this is prophecies of impending doom and collapse. And it's really independent of what field you look at. You know, if you're interested in the environment and environmentalism, then you will constantly receive messages about global warming or climate change and how things just around the corner are about to uh, become completely unsustainable and uh, lead to environmental collapse on the planet. Uh, If you're an investor and you're interested in the economy, then you can read things about how the Western financial system is on the verge of collapse. Government debt is completely unsustainable and any day now, Uh, the entire financial system will uh, melt down, resulting in hyperinflation and so forth. Uh, If you're interested in politics, then you can look at the rise of the surveillance state and the enormous uh, uh, amount of investment that governments are making in uh, tracking everything that we do online and so forth. And it can seem like Big Brother is uh, – George Orwell's vision of Big Brother is really uh, just about to come true. And basically any field that you look at, you will find uh, prophecies of doom and you will find people talking about uh, how things can't go on and how the end is nigh uh, just around the corner any day now. And are these are these true? Um, are these predictions true? Uh, in terms of global warming or the uh, Western monetary system or uh, any of these other things, I don't know. And I can't tell because uh, nobody can predict uh, predict the future. I certainly understand the arguments and I can see why uh, people uh, make those arguments. But I will say one thing, that there I do notice this common pattern um, in terms of predictions of doom and I also notice the impact and the effect that they can have on people in the way that they lead their lives. Because it seems to me that there's always a credible threat to our civilization. There's always something going on that is about to end in catastrophe. And if you look back, um, you can see previous credible threats of doom that people have talked about. In the 1970s, uh, acid rain was a credible threat that people thought that uh, forests of Europe were about to be melted by acid rain. Uh, They thought that we were all going to die of a massive cancer epidemic because of uh, chemicals in the the environment and the food chain. Um, They thought that uh, there would be global freezing in the 1970s, we'll say. That was a concern uh, before global warming. And... uh, Everyone thought that uh, the world would end in in nuclear war. And so there's always a current threat that people are worried about that becomes uh, this prophecy of impending doom. And I think that um, the reason for that and the reason um, I call it doom porn is because it it really uh, taps into that reptile part of our brain that processes threats and gives us the fight or flight response that new information on the horizon that might be a threat is far more exciting to our brain uh, in many ways than new information which uh, which tells us that um, things are going pretty well and that's why these kinds of threat stories always trump other stories in the media the latest and loudest news is about you know, death and destruction and impending doom. And unfortunately, there is a demand for these stories too because they are exciting and then the media feeds that demand 
by providing these stories as the latest and loudest things. The media wants to sell these stories because they replicate very well. They're very, very uh, powerful memes. Um, the I ideas about uh, credible threats to you are, are far more easy to uh, spread than ideas about you know, how well things are going, for example. And the concern that I have about these things is what it leads to in people's own personal lives. Because it seems to me that um, doom porn has two effects. The first effect is uh, nihilism, that it can lead you to think like, well, what's the point in me being an entrepreneur and starting a business because uh, taxes are just uh, exploding and the financial system's about to melt down, so there's just no point. There's no point in, in you know, trying to do that. Or there's no point in, in, in uh, having kids and uh, investing in my personal relationships and my family life because the world uh, is going to end anyway. And the other thing that it leads to is disengagement from society. Uh, it seems to me that no matter where you are on the political spectrum, left or right, the solution that is promoted for these uh, prophecies of doom, of impending collapse, is always the same thing. It's always uh, a disengagement from society. Like, so instead of living in cities, uh, the idea is that you should go off into the hills, into the wilderness, into a village somewhere, get away from civilization because it's all about to collapse. And instead of trade, the idea is always self sufficiency. So rather than, you know, work on your skills and develop your expertise and become a specialist in. Uh, the modern complex economy, the, the idea is always to have this self-sustaining home with your own food supply and so forth so that you're independent of incoming collapse. And I'm not saying it's wrong to do any of these things. I just notice that that's always the solution that's promoted regardless of which political um, side of the spectrum people come from and regardless of whether they think it's going to be an environmental collapse or they think it's going to be an economic collapse and so on and so forth. So... That strikes me as being important and worth being critical of in, because of that. And the worst thing about doom porn, I think, is that you can get so focused on it, and I, I have experienced this myself, that you can miss out on the wonderful and amazing things that are happening in our lifetime uh, because we live in the most incredible time of progress. There's never been progress like this in history. Um, there's never been a better world on almost any measure that you can imagine than the world that we live in now. If you compare the world now to the world in 1950, the average person lives one third longer than they did in 1950. They eat one-third more calories. They have two-thirds fewer infant deaths. Their wealth, in real terms, adjusted for inflation, is three times higher than in 1950. And yet there are three times as many people on Earth as there were in 1950. Now, these are all averages, and we're talking about the planet as a whole, but that is an amazing level of progress. The percentage of people in poverty has halved in the last 50 years, and the number, the absolute number of people in poverty has been going down for the last 15 years. In fact, in recent years, poverty has been reducing even faster, and I'll post a link to this data in the show notes. But just in summary, poverty reduction accelerated in the early 2000s at a rate that has been sustained throughout the decade, even during the financial crisis of 2008. And in 1990, a bunch of politicians set the Millennium Development Goals, which was to halve the rate of global poverty by 2015 from its 1990 level. In fact, that goal was reached around three years ago. And whereas it took 25 years to reduce poverty by half a billion people up to 2005, the same feat was achieved in the six years between 2005 and 2011. So never before have so many people been lifted out of poverty over such a brief period of time. Now, I'm not saying that uh, there are no problems in the world. Of course, 
Um, I'm not saying that there's not massive injustices in the world. And with all of these trends, there are some places where some things are not getting better, they're getting much worse. But overall, as a planet, you know, we live in a, an amazing time of progress. And you can totally miss that if you're so focused on doom porn uh, that you sort of fail to see uh, all of the incredible opportunity around you um, from being born at a time like this. And, of course, I'm not saying that we shouldn't fight the injustice that exists in the world, even though, the, for example, even though the uh, overall, the global economy is growing very well, uh, the debt crisis in Western Europe and America is incredibly unjust. Governments are selling future generations into debt to pay for spending now, and that is completely unjust. And I'm not saying that we should be complacent about uh, the potential for some of the catastrophes that I've talked about. So, for example, maybe the Western financial system will implode. I don't know. And maybe it's a good idea to put some of your portfolio in gold, as I've talked about in other podcasts, as a hedge against that threat. But the point is, if you're totally focused on one of these threats coming true then you get you miss out on seeing what a wonderful world we do live in and what a great opportunity it is and what a great privilege it is to be born uh, into this world so i thought i'd finish just by sharing a few thoughts about how i deal with uh, doom porn because i've definitely sort of found in the past that these potential threats can limit my own sense of drive and optimism and the pursuit of happiness, uh, if I focus on them too much without getting a balance. And there's a few things that I found uh, helpful, which I thought I would share with you um, from my approach. The first thing is I've just stopped reading newspapers and the mass media. And, I mean, this is something that uh, most really productive people who I've read uh, do this. Uh, Tim Ferriss talks about this in his book, uh, the four hour work week David Allen talks about this um, with his approach to getting things done of taking a, a media diet and the mass media on a daily basis is just a constant stream of doom porn and for me uh, it actually doesn't really enhance my life at all to to read that on a daily basis uh, you can catch up by uh, reading the paper once every six months, in in my experience, and you still kind of get a sense of, of where the world is at. Um, so I, I'm quite choosy about what media I consume. The other thing that I found really helpful is to read the contrary view to whatever prediction of doom it is that, you know, can, really concerns you. So, for example, if you're very concerned about global warming, then read the uh, global warming skeptics, you know, and don't read the, the rubbish ones. You know, find really, really good ones, not just a straw man of the argument, but read some global warming skeptics who really understand the, uh, the science behind global warming and who provide a really good argument. Or on the other hand, for example, if you are um, really concerned about financial meltdown in the West then it can be really useful to find some alternative views that actually make counter-arguments as to why we won't have runaway inflation and collapse of the currency and so forth. And again, I think it's good to find views that are intelligent critiques of that position. So I have found free market economists who understand the threat of inflation and who understand the problem of money printing but still argue that we're unlikely to get hyperinflation in the West and we're more likely to get the kind of deflationary economy that uh, we've seen in Japan for the last 20 years where uh, there's just very, very uh, slow growth but not the runaway inflation uh, that, that some people are predicting for the West. And I think it's really helpful to read uh, the counter, you know, the counter arguments to the predictions that concern you most. The other thing I think it's really useful to do is to read uh, some of the summaries of the kind of progress that is taking place now. I read a book recently called The Rational Optimist by Matt Ridley, which is a really, really good summary of just how much progress is taking place and uh, and has taken place. Uh, in the last 200 years and is still uh, accelerating now. 
Uh, there are other ones. I haven't read it, but Julian Simon's book, uh, The Ultimate Resource, uh, is another example uh, showing the sort of trends in development and progress that, of, of times that we live in now. And I think the most important thing that I have to remind myself of is just how difficult it is to make predictions about future trends. Even if you do identify threats, who knows when any of these things uh, will or won't happen and who knows how other things will develop to, to take care of the problems that, that we currently see. Um, so you can't predict the future and given how much economic, social and every other kind of progress we've had in the last 200 years, based on past events, you might as well be an optimist. And you might as well be as optimistic and positive about the opportunities that you have from being alive now. And of course, again, that doesn't mean to be complacent. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't uh, insure yourself against the risks that you can insure yourself against and hedge against the risks that you can hedge against and uh, take precautions where you can. And it doesn't mean that we shouldn't fight injustice. But I think, um, given that it's New Year's Eve, the thing that I would like to focus on is also uh, what a wonderful, beautiful world we live in and what a great opportunity it is to be alive now. Thank you so much for listening and Happy New Year. Thank you for listening to The Voluntary Life. If you have feedback about the show, please email jake at thevoluntarylife.com. If you enjoyed this program, please share the podcast with your friends or click the donate button on thevoluntarylife.com.